at, like we would go to my dad's house and he would have bullets soaking in garlic in the sink. Like Kareem asked him, what you got these bullets in the sink? What's about? What it's about? Don't worry about that, son. Go ahead about your business. If, you know, if I do a crime and I get busted, I'm, the police give me 99 years, bro. I was taught, the OGs taught me, tell them, tell them they more got it. Tell them what the drugs that twin? Your mama my got it. Yeah, he's a little boy. We sat on the third floor, so it was very seldom that a bullet would come through our window. We didn't have bullets going coming through our windows and shit. But I seen a lot coming up. I seen up. a lot coming up. And that molded me when I had a fire coming out of me and my mama witnessed a murder one time together. I'm on the front porch, on the front, building a, 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 a pinball machine, and I see a dude come off Martin Luther King, walk through the driveway, put a gun in a bag. He walk around the back. I go to the window to tell my mom, she in the third room, talking to a dude downstairs. I said, Mom, a man just put a gun in the bag. Da, 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 da. As I'm saying that, the dude walking up to the dude my mama was talking to. We on the third floor. The dude name was Shorty. Everybody liked him because he was cool. He was a likable dude. You know, handsome dude. And it was arguing about an eight track cassette tape. Yup. Arguing about an eight, and he took the gun out of the bag. Me and my mama just, like, me in the window. We, this time, he probably came in to see what was going on. Look, the dude shot Shorty. Boom. He went against the wall, hands start shaking. He, he, he didn't fall all the way yet. Hit him again, he fell to his knees. Then he hit him again in his head. Put the gun in the bag and walk around the corner. Traumatized. I'm, at, I'm, simple, so I'm desensitized to seeing that type of shit. I've been seeing people get shot in the head and, you know, if you, between that Magnolia and that Calio, bro, like, see Washington for red? That little corner right there where the buses got the pass at, you got to go to the store right there. Every hood <coughs> uptown and been on that corner. You got the Magnolia holes and you got these holes, they selling clothes and you got, man, look, you might have a, on this, on this, in, on this four corner square, you might have about twenty dudes that got guns on that's about killing every day, mm -hmm. because that was like a hub where people came after school. Four shade clock, Booker T, coin, right there on Washington for rep. That would be the Washington for on Sunday. They bug jumping, but Washington for rep was where they used to have all the second line slim front right there, and that's our set. So we had to hold that down. My daddy got watched my daddy dead in the streets, blood pouring out his head. I'm just a little bit of boy outside, no shoes on, just looking like damn. I don't know if people think this shit the country, man. This ain't no country. Look at my daddy, man. I, I couldn't do nothing. He down there shaking. Man, what happened blood. to him, man? He got shot. I don't, I, I don't know the details exactly what happened, but it's just a normal thing in New Orleans. I was about eight or nine when my dad got killed. It did. He got killed right behind Ernst. Right behind Ernst. The grocery store right there on uh, Tyler Dono. Any rattle? Oh, that dirty wall? Yeah, that was can you talk about that? What happened? Well, I was, I was a child, but from my understanding, from my understanding, he had a conference, the, the dude that who, who owned the bar, who was bartending that night, they had like a confrontation about a woman my daddy had took from him, from, uh, from my understanding. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he was about, I'm about to close up, and my dad was like, well, I'm not finishing my drink. So they had words. They dig, and my daddy was leaving to get out. He shot him in the back of the head, came out his eye. You know what I'm saying? Now, the crazy part about that is, man, I learned at an early age too, that you live by the gun, you die by the gun. You understand? Like, we would go to my dad's house, he would have bullets soaking in garlic in the sink. Like, Kareem asked him, what you got these bullets what in the sink? What about? What it's about? Don't worry about that, son. Go ahead about your business. But my, my dad was in Vietnam, dude, so my dad was like... So the dude that he actually shot with, the, with, with, those, with those bullets that he had soaking in garlic lived in our driveway. He shot the dude. The dude went in the hospital for a couple of months and died from infection. But the, from my understanding, the reason why he shot the dude was because the dude kept selling my, my uncle, right. and my uncle ended up, I don't know how it happened, this this is facts, man, this is some crazy shit I'm about to say. My uncle, they found him on a, on a, on a, on a Amtrak, cut up, they, they had tied him up and put him on the tracks. And the train rolled over. The train rolled over. My uncle EJ. My uncle EJ, couldn't even have an open uh, uh, funeral for him. Fat Tanner. Fat, maybe did the thing on Fat Tanner? He used to be in my house. Matter of fact, on your video in the beginning, my daddy on the porch. My daddy sitting on my the porch. My daddy's on the porch in the Calio video. If you look at that picture, you'll see this one right here is the twins' daddy. Can we look just like that's my grandmother's porch. That's his mother's his mother's porch. Man, I, like I said, I grew up in the Calio, so I grew up around. I seen Glenn Metz. I seen Nick Sam's the Bali, Nick the Balu, uh, Halloween, Halloween. Uh, Bowling, Sir Fatson, Sir Fatson. I seen all these people, man. Yeah, yeah. There was some gangsters. There was some gangsters, bro. Like by us coming up in both of them, we was around them, and like I hate to say it, I'm mom probably not proud of that, but. Like one of one of Tanner lieutenants was in our that, that, that was our old man at the time. In the era of El Bronax and Sam Scully look and Nick up. the Balo, mm -hmm. look him up, chief and all that. Yeah. I was a little boy. Mm -hmm. And he was a gift. The little kids, they show kids love. They didn't 
over so, children like this. No, 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 you were saying, you had mentioned that. Oh, no, who was saying that? Fat, Fat Tanner, Tanner, according to, to y'all documentary, mm-hmm. was getting the work from Frank oh, Lewis okay, okay, through okay. his wife. Right, through right, his right, wife. Right, right. But Fat Tanner's lieutenant, main lieutenant, right. was my mom's old man at the time. So Fat Tanner would come to our house all the time. If we get A's on our report card, $100 an A. If we lose a tooth, tooth ferret, $100. See, Christmas, bro, I come down the stairs with Christmas, I had a toy. The whole <laughs> front room just full of fucking toys. Yeah, bro, yeah. was it true to that? That, that um, Al was getting his, his work from him? I think it was, but he couldn't fuck with him. Yeah. What was his name? Fat Tanner. His name was Tanner. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Frank, Frank, Frank Lucas, Lucas yeah. Frank Lucas, his wife, and I didn't know at the time. I didn't know at the time. I, I found know. out recently, you know, that's where we was getting it from. But I know one thing: like it was a lot of money flowing through our house at that time. The police kicked out door and took my mom to jail one night. I remember, I never forget when they searched my mom. My auntie they made to put our shirts over our head while they searched them. But they kicked out door and we were sitting down eating in the, in the, in the, in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. I had to be like six, seven years old. I remember did. that though. I remember that it scary though. It was a scary experience. You did. And sometimes, that's a lot of time why we ended up in the Magnolia too because my dad didn't like us being in that house in that situation. So my mama raised by my grandmother in the Magnolia. We'd be over there for the summer over there. We two, three years of going to school over there. That's a unique story, boy. We did a, y'all, man, y'all definitely did that podcast.